high second graders. Today we're going to start with chapter 46. Saturday morning dawned clean and cool. Even before the sun made itself known, the animals and owls departed the safety of my limbs. Each family had found a new home, all in a nearby trees on the same block. The skunks were going to remain under their porch. It made me happy to know that everyone would be staying in the neighborhood. One by one, they nuzzled me, whispering their goodbyes. The baby sniffled, especially Harold and Rose Petal and Flashlight. The parents tried to put on brave faces, but their trembling voices gave them away. It was awful, but I was glad to get it over with. I've always hated goodbyes. Bongo, for her part, insisted on staying with me to the bitter end. I knew better than to argue with her. By six in the morning, Stephen and Samar were sitting together on Samar's porch. By seven, Sandy and Max had arrived. They parked across the street and sat in their cruisers, sipping coffee and eating donuts. By eight, three local reporters had arrived, armed with microphones and fancy equipment. They took video of the word leave. They talked about its meaning and how it changed the feel of the neighborhood. They talked about me, the doomed wish tree. I didn't like the word doomed but I had to admit it was accurate reporting. Francesca came at 8.30 carrying a cup of tea and dragging a small wooden ladder, the one she put every year out for the wishmakers. She went back home and promptly returned with Lewis and Clark on their kitty leashes. They were not cooperative. And then the wishes began. A toddler on her dad's shoulders reaching high, an old woman aided by two young girls, neighbor after neighbor, many of whom I've seen pass by over the years. Wish after wish after wish. Some on scraps of colorful fabric, many on paper tied with a ribbon or string, a few socks, two t-shirts, and one pair of underwear. At first people came in small groups or one by one, but then something changed. The trickle of people became a deluge. Many of them were kids from the elementary school, but their parents, but there were parents and teachers too. A dozen kids, 50, maybe a hundred or more. Each person seemed to be carrying an index card. Each card had a hole punched in it with a piece of string looped through the hole. Stephen high-fived many of them, hugged his principal wave to his teacher. Samar just sat on the steps with her parents a quizzical expression on her face. One by one, the children tied their wishes to me. The principal and assistant principal and janitor and teachers all helped. My bows had never before been so laden. My heart had never been more hopeful. Because as each child, as each neighbor, as each stranger placed a wish upon me, they looked at Samar and her parents and said the same thing. Day. Chapter 47. Within an hour, I was covered with the word stay. Extra wishes lay on the ground beneath me, piled like blossoms. Wishes made their way onto the porches, the railings, the sidewalk. After 216 rings, I thought I'd seen it all. It turns out you're never too old enough to be surprised. Soon it became clear that the stay wishes had been Stephen's idea. With the help of his teacher, Stephen's whole class had secretly worked much of the previous school day making the index cards. Word spread quickly about the project. Before long, the whole school had joined in. So, this was your idea, Summer asked Stephen. I had a lot of help, he said. It's a miracle we kept a secret from you. Summer looked over at her parents. I don't know if this will change anything, she said. Stephen looked over at his parents. Me neither. Thank you both, Samar said. We're trying. Stephen started to reply, but just then the Timber Terminator's truck pulled up. The end of my story was coming. Well, it had been a beautiful story. How lucky was I to have seen a day like today? But Stephen and Samar weren't giving up so easily. They ran straight to Francesca, who was busy untangling the kittens wound around her right leg. Please, Samar begged. You can see how much people love the wish tree. Please don't cut it down. Child, Francesca said firmly, it's time. Stephen pulled something from his leather, from his jacket pocket. It was a small leather-bound journal. So you found it, Francesca said, in the shed. Yep, 
said Stephen, handing the worn diary to her. It's a little damp, said Francesca. Samar pressed the key, its long ribbon dangling, into Francesca's palm. You should read it. <laughs> Maybe someday. How about now? Stephen urged. Francesca sighed, you children need a hobby, you know that? She put the key in the silver lock, and the journal clicked open. The pages were yellow, the ink faded. Let me guess, it's about a tree that can talk? Actually, it's about this neighborhood, Stephen said. It's about us. Please, Samara said. Dear, it won't change anything, Francesca said. Please, Stephen said. Oh, fine. Francesca rolled her eyes. Gotta wait for the tree guys to finish getting set up. Sure, I'll glance it over. Maybe then you'll leave me in peace? Dragging Lewis and Clark behind her, Francesca went to Samara's porch, sat on the top step, and began to read. Chapter 48. It wasn't easy cutting down a big tree. It takes careful planning and people who know what they're doing. I'd seen neighborhood trees cut down. I knew how things went. While Sandy and Max moved people to a safe distance, Stephen's parents watched from their porch and Samara's from theirs. Meanwhile, the tree people put ropes around my trunk and consulted with one another. A man and a woman carried over a huge chainsaw, followed by a stump grinder. The grinder looked a lot like a hungry animal. Actually, it looked a lot, lot like a hungry animal. Are all those critters gone? Dave called to Francesca. I haven't seen any, she answered. Dave climbed a ladder and peered into my hollows as well as he could. He didn't seem to notice Bongo, who was hiding deep in the owl's former home. I sat patiently, awaiting my fate, while the world around me buzzed. A huge crowd filled with old neighbors and new friends had gathered, it seemed, to see me off. Near the curb, some kids were making music. I don't know if it was good music, but it was most definitely loud music. I realized that it was the garage band Pongo li or Bongo liked. The whole thing was almost like a party, a going away party. There it was surrounding me, my wild and tangled and colorful garden. It wasn't such a bad way to leave the world, I decided. Not bad at all. End of reading.